Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to Ask the Jeff Albedo Edition. Did you know that in co-op, Albedo's flower is invisible, so you can fly if you disable co-op partner effect and someone else goes Albedo? <laughs> Let's get right into the questions. I'll just make chat a little bit smaller. Oh yeah, and as usual, thank you to Shuffle, one of my mods, for compiling the questions in the community post. And uh, let's get right into it. First things first, his overall place in the meta, pull value, and has anything changed in his overall value since 2.3, especially after the release of Dendro? His overall place in the meta is very straightforward. If you're a player who focuses on meta, you don't want Albedo. Yelan's release made a lot of the teams where you could play Albedo because you already wanted to have Zhongli and there wasn't a good last slot. Like for example, Double Geo Hu Tao. A lot of those teams playing Yelan instead of Albedo is better. So in terms of like reinforcing good, relatively comfortable teams, he has lost some value in that. Not that Albedo isn't good. Not that Albedo doesn't have any teams. But if you focus specifically on getting your account to the best state it can be on with two strong teams, Albedo won't be it. The only team where Albedo is actually an optimal option is Ito teams. But even in Ito teams, there are actually alternatives to Albedo that aren't that much worse. But mostly just that, will you ever be in a situation where the best way to make your team stronger is to pull Albedo? No. Because even if you have Ito, your Ito team won't be your best team. However, and this is a very huge like refutation, I guess, that doesn't mean that you can't go for him. And there are not a lot of people who care only about meta. There's a lot of people that care how strong a character is, but there's not a lot of people that will completely ignore characters that they think look really fun just to go for the strongest character every time. So even though I say if you're a meta player, like strictly meta player, you don't want Albedo, just understand that you're probably not actually a strictly meta player, even if you do care about character strength. So his overall place in the meta is basically, in terms of like optimal meta teams, he only really has a place in Ito teams, but in terms of an option you can put on your team, he can be put everywhere. Before Ito's release, Albedo was very much the flex tape of Genshin Impact. If you're trying, for example, to build a boat, your flex tape isn't gonna help you actually get the boat working. But if you have a boat and there's a hole in your boat, then you can use some flex tape. He's not gonna be an important part of your team building process, but if you have a team that like functions with three units, and there's no like amazing choice for a last fourth synergistic unit. He's always going to be a unit that will make your team stronger over not having him in because his damage is like very reliable. You 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 know how what Albedo is going to do and he basically does the same thing in every team. With Ito's release, we got a defense scaling Geo character and we got Goro as well, who's a defense buffing Geo character. And it's an AoE buff to whoever's on field, but because Albedo's E snapshots, you can you can get it. We also got the Husk artifact set and with Albedo's rerun, we also got the Cinnabar Spindle. So now Albedo actually has a team where he's not just flex tape, he's also an actual part of your team building process. I assume that well, the reason why people are asking if his value has changed after the release of Dendro is because of his EM buff from one of his passes. Don't pay, don't pay, don't, don't mind my talent levels. <laughs> using Rise of, using his burst, increases the EM of nearby party members by 125 for 10 seconds. Because all the Dendro reactions care about EM, getting EM is good. Now, the biggest problem is that most Dendro teams want something specific in their third and fourth slot. Take aggravate teams, for example, or quicken teams, I guess. You want an Electro and you want a Dendro, because otherwise you can't trigger quicken. Then after that, because your Electro units gain so much value from VV, you want an Animal unit. And then because you already have VV and quicken on your team, your last slot would really like to be an Electro unit, a second Electro unit. But if you don't go for a second Electro unit, you can also go for good defensive options, like Zhongli. Albedo's not a good defensive option because, I mean, crystallized shields are a joke, and he deals a lot less damage than an Electro unit would in his place. The 125 EM, like, it, it is nice, but there's not enough of an incentive to play Albedo to begin with in those teams. Then when it comes to Hyper Bloom teams, you want your Hydro, you want your Electro, you want your Dendro. That leaves you with one last slot. And that last slot can can actually be Albedo. It's just that generally you'll have better options. Options like Zhongli because Hyperbloom damage is Dendro damage. Zhongli's Dendro Res Red is actually quite valuable. Other sources like a second Hydro unit because Hydro units are just really good. And so he's a functional unit in those teams, but he's not, he's never going to be your best option. He basically fulfills the same role as he does 
in free 3.0 teams other than Mono Geo. Which is just, they don't the best, but he works. You can use him if you want. Have fun. But yeah, so his place in the meta hasn't really changed in any significant way from Dead Girl. Uh, when is he a good or bad pull over the other 5-star units? I'd say the only situation in which he's a good pull over other 5-star units is if, specifically, you want to play Ito. Or I guess Noel. Other than that, I probably would never say he's like a good pull. You, you'd always have other better 5-star options. Right. How does he compare to the likes of Ilan and Yaimiko in the off-field DPS or general purpose, purpose flex slot role? I don't think Yaimiko is that good of a, an example for this because while she does do off-field DPS, her field time requirements because of her slow cast times are so high that she's almost not an off-field unit. <laughs> if you do EEE -E -E, then swap out then like 12 seconds later back to her QEEE, -E -E, it's fine. It's still higher than most of the other off-field units though. I think Yelan is a fine comparison. You can also compare him to Fischl. So the main like difference that he has with those is that he's not burst reliant and his EEE lasts forever unlike Fischl. With Fischl, ideally, you want to be able to swap back into her even if it's just to recast Oz because Oz lasts only 10 seconds or 12 seconds at C6. You can get basically 100% Oz uptime, but you do need to swap into Fischl two times per rotation. With Albedo, you can just swap into him once per rotation. Sometimes once per rotation and a half. In exchange for that, he just does less damage. That's kind of the cost, the, the, the price he has to pay. He also isn't doing much other than the damage. He's not applying a, an element that's useful to have. His biggest downside compared to them, his flower can be destroyed either by the enemies killing it or by hitbox overlap. The flower cannot be under certain enemies like bosses, for example. All right, I do this. So ideally against those bosses, you're gonna have to place the, the flower behind you. If you remember to do that, it's not too much of a problem. It's more of an annoying thing, just something you have to remember, but it's also not something that will actually affect your rotations if you do keep it in mind. Can I explain my previous statement of Albedo being the best Geo unit? So basically the, the role that Albedo has is all field damage dealer and the stats he scales with is obviously Geo damage and defense. From Ito and Goro's release, I think it's pretty clear that the direction they want to take Geo units in is defense scaling damage dealers or just defense scaling units in general. So he's got the synergy with the kind of things that Geo wants and he's an off fielder. Every time a new on fielder gets released, if they're similar to another on fielder and they're slightly better, then you'll play them instead of the on-fielder. If it's an off-fielder that gets released and they're slightly better than the previous one, you probably play both of them together, actually. And because of that, I think that off-fielders are just inherently more valuable, I guess. That being said, though, I don't actually think I stand by this anymore, Albedo being the best Geo unit anymore. I think Goro's the best Geo unit. Yeah, Goro just doesn't have an alternative, basically. Like, the strength of Ito is reliant on Goro being Goro, and I think that Goro has more longevity because he would be good with other defense killers. Weapon overview. How good slash important is Cinnabar Spindle on him? And are there alternatives now that it isn't available? Cinnabar is his best weapon by a pretty significant margin, which is obviously very unfortunate for people that don't have it. And if you're considering getting him on his rerun, it might be because you weren't playing when his last rerun came around, which is when we had the Cinnabar. So defense percent with Cinnabar and then with the next best option, which is Harbinger. Average damage of around 16k. This is average, this is not the damage you'll see on your screen, right? So the damage you'll see on your screen will be higher if it crits and lower if it doesn't crit. Oh, uh, this is not with Zhongli. This is just, I guess you kind of basically always play him with Zhongli. So I, we can look at with Zhongli. So this is with Zhongli around 18k average. Now on a crit, let's say he's 6120. It'll be around 23k with this stat distribution. Uh, let's take, now take a look at Harbinger. Looks a lot lower. You do end up in a situation where, right, so right now we're at 15.288k. Uh, if you go defense, you can go defense circlet with Harbinger. It's not going to be better than crit. It might be about as good or slightly better depending on substat, but it's not, it's not like the best option anymore. Anyways, this is the comparison with Zhongli, so no, no Goro. And Cinnabar is about 18% better. If you are to use Goro, which makes it go to 13 instead of 18. Cinnabar still being quite a bit better, but the gap not being as high. And then if it's C6 Goro, stays around 13%. So because Goro gives a lot of defense, it makes it so that the high defense stat on Cinnabar is like reaching harsher diminishing, 
quote unquote diminishing returns you have more defense which makes a crit buff more valuable but doesn't change the value of a defense buff comparatively defense becomes worse when you're playing him with goro this 18.7 percent becomes 13.3 percent with cinnabar still being better but not by quite as much cinnabar is obviously his best weapon but if you don't have it you can still use harbinger and it's not the end of the world that being said though you got to make sure you stay above 90 percent hp which is easy on albedo because he's always off field but if you get something like rift hounds that can be a bit of a pain how important is four piece husk on him and how does it compare to his other options yes <laughs> So with two-piece Petra, Husk is about 25% better. Obviously now you can go two-piece Husk, right? Two-piece Petra, two-piece Husk. If you do go two-piece Petra, two-piece Husk, it's still 13% better to go Husk. And unlike for the weapons, this is something you can do something about without having to get the weapon somehow, right? You can just farm for the artifact. Now obviously if you have like really, really good stats on a two-piece Petra or on a four-piece Petra, because you can go four-piece Petra, which is obviously gonna make you lose the Husk bonus, you'll still be as 20% behind. In exchange, you're gaining damage percent for your other element, which can be good, obviously. But yeah, like the, the damage difference on him will be noticeable. If you don't have a Husk set, you can use two-piece defenders because it's 30 percent defense it's good for like low investment albedo where you just slap a two-piece on him with whatever else and if you put it on flower and feather your main stats don't actually impact your damage so it's only the sub stats and while yes you get less sub stats on four stars because they start with one less line and the sub stats that you do get are slightly lower for low investment that doesn't matter that much because you're not gonna have good artifacts anyways so you can use a two-piece defenders uh, also obviously you can use him on like four-piece instructor four-piece noblesse four-piece exile four-piece whatever the Okay. support set although generally i wouldn't do that i just don't think it's really worth it i think the only support set that could have some value for him is the deep wood set if you play him with in dendro teams generally four piece husk is what you want on your albedo at what amount does defense begin to give diminishing returns for albedo as usual when we talk about diminishing returns i'll give the disclaimer that technically it's not called diminishing returns diminishing returns refers to the more you have of a thing the less you gain from getting more it's not exactly the case here the number of damage that you gain from defense is the same no matter how much defense you have if i have here if i gain plus five oh or rather i gain five percent defense the amount of damage i gain on my e is around 300 right 286 if i start with a hundred percent more defense i'm still gaining 286 it's still the same amount of damage you gain it's still the same amount of dps you gain the number that does change is the percentage difference between the two 1.57 and if i start with 100 percent more 1.19 1.2 so it's not that you're gaining less it's not that your returns diminish is that a constant return on a growing number becomes less and less noticeable in terms of percentages. But that being said though, I don't mind using the terms diminishing returns, right? It's, it's still, it still works because it still gets the idea across. Like to someone who isn't into maths and doesn't know math terms, it still gets the right idea across that you don't want to just focus on one thing. And to someone who does understand math, you already understand how the math works. So the term being used will not harm you in any way, right? Technically it is opportunity cost. The thing is opportunity cost, it doesn't convey the idea as strongly, basically. Yeah, I know technically it's not the accurate term. I don't care, I'm still gonna use it. So just like all other units, he has these quote unquote diminishing returns, but for defense, those quote unquote diminishing returns don't necessarily hit as hard because you don't have flat defense to begin with, right? Your first roll of defense will give you 1.8% if you're on Cinnabar. With attack on an attack scaling character, one roll of attack percent, 2.2%, which is a little bit more. However, there's a lot of attack buffs in the game, which means that a lot of the time you're gonna start with a bunch more, but also maybe you got a, B a Bennett buff, right? And then that makes it really not that valuable to begin with. What I'm getting at here is that on a lot of characters, attack percent as a substat will comparatively not be as valuable as, for example, the crit substat. So you would need to have more attack substats for your attack subs to impact your damage more than a crit sub. With defense, because defense buffs are a bit less readily available, that won't always be the case. All of that being said, though, it just works the same way as it usually does, right? You've got your normal defense stuff that works the same way as defense stuff always does. More defense you have, the less valuable defense becomes but that doesn't mean defense isn't a good substat i have this thing this thing is really okay. good sure it only has one crit roll but because it has so much defense it's still a really good piece and it's better than this one that has three crit rolls instead of one and and also two defense rolls but because this one just has so much defense it's just better so just keep in mind a lot of defense can be better than a bit of crit
How much of an improvement uh, is Albedo and Chow teams over other flex options like UMC, Fischl, Bennett? It kind of depends. If the core of your team is Dongli, Sucrose, for example, Bennett can actually be really, really good. But Albedo will be easier to play. Bennett is also going to require an insane, a fucking insane amount of ER to actually be able to use his burst without needing more than one E. In practice, I've basically very consistently cleared faster with Bennett than with Albedo. But he's still, he's still like a very viable slot in the team. And he's very comfy. Like he's very brain dead to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how reliant is Albedo, Albedo when being partnered with Zhongli? If you play him in Ito or Noel teams, you don't actually need Zhongli, and you can go for different things instead. On other teams, though, like, you, you, you generally don't want solo Geo Albedo, unless it's really just, like, you don't have another option for that slot. Okay, does he synergize well with Sino given how his E lasts the full duration of his burst? He has uptime synergy with Sino. He doesn't have elemental or kit synergy with Sino other than that though. I actually have been playing double Geo Sino with Zhongli Albedo DMC. I've actually enjoyed it and it hasn't performed much worse than the other teams I've been doing. Obviously you're running solo Electro Sino so you need to run a bit of ER on him. The main advantage that, that this team has is that by virtue of being a Sino team where you have like really long uptime on your Albedo, you can actually stay on Sino for the fourth eye if you want to. Generally you don't because your Zhongli shield runs out. But your albedo stuff is still going and it's not like you're, you're losing that much damage if you like need to finish off an enemy basically constellation overview bad 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 energy for albedo doesn't matter because he doesn't burst with c2 you probably you you will use your burst but the amount of damage that you're actually gaining on the c2 motion value q for defense at c0 is zero percent the damage you gain from the C2 is about 13%. The thing is, it's not actually 13% because when you don't have C2, you don't use your burst. The reason you don't use your burst is because using your burst is time that you're spending that you're not spending on a different character. When you have C2, that time becomes worth spending on Albedo, but you're still actually losing the time on another character, which means that the reality is here it's not worth it because you lose damage to use your Q. Here it is worth it because you don't lose damage, but the damage you gain isn't the difference between these two because this one is suboptimal. So it's 13% assuming you already want to use your burst, which is not the case in most teams. Whereas the C3, I guess just looking at the C3 in a vacuum, it looks like it's a bit less, but you're not having to change anything in order to use it, right? All of this to say, realistically, most of the time C2 isn't actually a damage increase. The damage increase from C2 is less than a damage increase just from talent levels. In other words, the C2 is not that good. If you're playing it with venti and a lot of enemies you could get all seven fatal blossoms to hit and if you do then the c2 can be valuable because the c2 damage increase right is the same damage increase on the tectonic tide so the burst itself and on the fatal blossom it's the same increase for both we only get one tectonic tide and you get up to seven fatal blossoms which means that if you get a lot of fatal blossoms then the c2 can be good but in order to get a lot of fatal blossoms you need to have a lot of enemies at once all that being said the rest of his constellations kind of suck right this only good if you use his burst so i guess it's fine with c2 but even then it's not that good either lunge attack damage only really matters for chow and i guess kazuha but kazuha goes em so it doesn't really do much because he doesn't have high attack or high crit and damage to characters that have a crystallized shield is like fine i guess but it's only active crystallized shields which means that if you get hit you lose it and it's really not a lot of damage either so all of this to say his constellations are basically standard five star level None of them are really good. Even the ones that do synergize with his kit aren't even that great. Does he need much ER? If you're in a team where his burst is worth casting because you need the EM, he can. But honestly, I would say even if you're in a team where his burst is worth casting, don't build any ER and just cast your burst every other rotation. His energy requirements are so dependent on RNG. So it's two thirds, you'll get maybe 10 per rotation. That's six geo particles. He's not catching any of them. If you use burst, you might get an E proc that you actually catch. Maybe on average, two thirds of a particle. So he doesn't need that much ER on average, right? The thing is, because it's not that many geo particles that get produced overall, let's say for example, you fuck okay. up your Donnelly pillar, just that, enough to make him need 140. Even if you don't fuck up your Donnelly pillar, let's say instead of gaining the exact average sometimes you're gonna gain less than average sometimes you're gonna gain more so maybe 
instead of the 11.6 you generate total, sometimes you're gonna generate like, I don't know, 7.6 instead of 11.6. 134 ER, just from getting slightly unlucky. And because burst is already not really very good, at that point just build no ER and burst every other rotation. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be easier to do. What kind of hy hypothetical future units should such a unit exist? Would synergize the best with Albedo? More carries like Ito or more Albedos. The, the biggest issue with like another Albedo is that if you were to go Ito, Goro, Albedo, Albedo, you don't have a shield and you don't have an element you can apply to reliably generate crystallized shields. But if there was another Albedo or another all field damage dealer that has a, had a slight shield, that could be good. You could also just use Noel as your own fielder. You have a lot of like possibilities. There's actually another team that I haven't mentioned earlier that's pretty okay with Albedo. You have some like Ningguang Quick Swamp teams that can be pretty good. You end up getting like a 25 second rotation with two Ningguang Bursts. And because Albedo's E lasts for long enough for the whole rotation and because he's Geo, which generates energy for Ningguang, he has some synergy there. And that is actually a team that can perform okay. It does it didn't really have to be the Electro one though. Out of all of the options you... But yeah, right, like, very functional team, pretty comfy. You can, like, think of it as a 25-second rotation team, but you can also think of it as a 12-second rotation team. And, I don't know, I, I like I like t rotations like that that are, like, alternate between two slightly different short rotations to make, like, one big rotation. I think those are fun. In Microwave, is Albedo an upgrade over GOMC in the last slot? Uh, yeah. No, kinda. Uh, GOMC's really, really good in Geo teams if you play him perfectly. But Geo MC is probably the hardest unit in the game to play perfectly. With Geo MC, when your E expires, it explodes for the same damage as your E did on the initial cast. That can work on it expiring because you summoned a fourth Geo construct, which deletes your oldest construct. Uh, his burst can also resonate with Zhongli's E. And if you have C1 Zhongli, it can resonate twice. So yeah, Microwave is basically just using Geo units and Geo constructs to make a bunch of well, waves. It's kind of just, it's a microwave, you know? Technically, you can get the GOMC version to be a bit better if everything lines up perfectly, but it won't. Like, I, I'm telling you right now, it won't. Generally, yeah, Albedo's better than, than GOMC in those in those teams. Is Double Geo still a worthwhile team for Hu Tao? It depends on what you mean by worthwhile. Is it something you should pull for? No. Is it something that you can play? Yeah. Like, if you already have Albedo and Zhongli and you don't have Yelan, did Yelan's release mean that that team is unplayable? No, you can still play it. But if you are if you want to improve your Hu Tao team and you have Zhongli, Sinto, Hu Tao, and you're wondering about the last slot, yeah, Yelan would be better. Thoughts on Chat Beto? It's a meme. But it's a funny meme. Assuming that I'll pull Albedo regardless of meta and I want to do whatever it takes to fit him into a team, what would be the best way to fit him into the rotation of a Hyper Bloom team with Kokomi, Kuki, and DFC? Considering the buff of Four Piece Petra, most definitely, if you want to make that team as good as possible, you should not go 4-piece Petra. The damage you'll gain from going 4-piece Husk will be better than going 4-piece Petra. Because Kugi is building fully M to trigger Hyper Blooms, so the damage percent increases a very, very small amount of damage. And Kokomi gets a significant portion of her damage from Clam, which doesn't get increased by Hydro damage. So you're just better off going 4-piece Husk on your Albedo. If you don't have a good Husk set, and you have a perfect Petra set for your Albedo, you really just start with Kokomi E into Albedo E, into picking up the crystal, into Kuki E, into DMC, back to Kokomi, do your thing. Can Albedo Elevator be used for equity? Yes, actually. It can be used for equity, it cannot be used for enviosity, unfortunately. <laughs> actually, that's not even true. It can be used for enviosity. Perfect. Moments of birth! Feel this ancient power burst forth!